Welcome to The Right Question. I'm Daphne Gray Grant. Today my topic is how to write cover letters. I have a question from Amanda Harriet, a writer who lives in Boston, Massachusetts. Here's what she's asked. My name is Amanda Harriet, and I'm calling from Boston, Massachusetts. I was scanning your website, and I love the update, by the way, for an article on cover letters, but I didn't find anything. Have you written about them? I'd be really interested in your perspective. Thank you. Thanks for the question, Amanda. Writing a good cover letter is one of the secrets to getting a great job, so you're wise to pay particular attention to this, even though it feels like a nuisance or a pain in the butt. Think of a cover letter as a type of audition. It's a chance to make a good first impression on the person reading it and persuade them to pay even closer attention to your resume. There are many do's and don'ts associated with cover letters, so let me begin by listing some of the do's. Number one, a cover letter must always fit on one page. If it doesn't, it's too long. Even a 55-year-old applying to be a CEO with a wealth of experience must stick to one page. Number two, a cover letter must always be personalized. Don't ever send out a generic letter. You can have a basic letter that you tweak, but tweak it you must. Number three, the cover letter must always be addressed to a specific person. Don't use dear sir or dear ma'am and certainly not to whom it may concern. If you need to make phone calls or send emails to get this information, be sure to do that work. Number four, you need some background information about the company where you're applying. So when you're calling them to collect the name of the person to whom you're applying, be sure to get some additional interesting information about the company and the job you're seeking. Number five, be sure to have a professional email address. Don't use something like saucy sister at yahoo.com or hotguy496 at hotmail.com. Instead, use your real name at a Gmail address. At the top of the letter, put your own name and contact information. Also use the name and contact info of the person you're applying to. Include the specific name of the job you're applying for. You can do it one of two ways, either across the top like this, or you can mention it in your opening paragraph. I've included a link below to a website with some more details on layout. Okay, now let's get into some juicy details. The ideal cover letter is only four paragraphs. In the first graph, describe who you are, where you saw the posting, your overall experience, and why you want to apply. In the second graph, summarize how your skills, experiences, and abilities will help you meet the company's needs. Don't just cut and paste this information from your resume. Instead, rephrase it using some of the specific language that appeared in the job posting. Include bullets and use numbers with these bullets. For example, if you increase sales 25% in your current job, be sure to mention that number. Also, if there's a tool or software skill the job requires, be sure to list it here too. In the third graph, display the research you've done on the company and explain how your experiences can fit in with their needs and goals. In the fourth graph, say you're available for an interview and repeat your contact information. Tell them that you'll be back in touch with them in a week if you haven't heard back from them and thank them for their attention. I know that four paragraphs doesn't sound like very much, but it's meant to be an introduction, not a full meal deal. Consider it an appetizer or an amuse-bouche, something people eat to make them want to eat more. Now, occasionally, you may be asked to send your cover letter in the body of an email rather than as an attachment. If you're sending anything by email, always put your name and job title in the subject line, but avoid formatting the body of an email like a letter. This means you go straight to the dear so-and-so part rather than having their contact information at the top. Again, be sure to have the person's real name and not just Dear Sir, Madam. Then give the four paragraphs I just outlined. End the email with a professional signature. You can do this by scanning your signature and turning it into a JPEG which you attach. Now, let me give you three don'ts for all cover letters. Don't use the word I too much. It will make you look narcissistic and self-involved. 
Once you've finished the letter, count the number of times you've used the word I and rephrase as many of them as possible. Don't mention any other jobs you might be seeking. Even though everyone will likely assume you're looking for other jobs, it's better for you if you act as though you're not. Don't ever send a resume or a cover letter without proofreading it carefully first. Better yet, Ask a friend or a colleague to proofread it for you, or hire a professional proofreader. If your letter or resume has a single typo, you won't get the job. Finally, let me wrap up with a quote from the late American professional tennis player, Arthur Ashe. One important key to success is self-confidence. An important key to self-confidence is preparation. Thanks for the question, Amanda. Writing a great cover letter is a type of preparation that not only can improve your self-confidence, but dramatically increase the chances of you getting the job you want. Music